But uh, we're happy to have another guest to talk to right now, joining us with some more insight on the presidential race. Political science professor at the University of New Haven, Dr. Matt Schmidt, joins us once again. Thanks so Good much for joining us this morning. So first of all, let's just start with where things stand right now. Where do you think you're le that things are leaning and are you surprised by anything that's happened? So this is, uh, you know, one of the scenarios uh, when you when you look at it right now, I think we're still leaning towards uh, a Biden win because of what you've got left. Uh, you've got the upper Midwest. And as uh, you were talking about earlier in the program, the votes that are coming in are going to lean heavily towards Biden, not just a little bit, but heavenly. We're talking in the 60, 70 percent breaking in his direction. So I think it's quite possible that at some point, you could simply see the map turn all of a sudden. You could see Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania turn blue. Arizona, um, even if Pennsylvania doesn't turn blue, you still got Georgia and North Carolina in play. So I think there are more opportunities for Biden to eke this thing out than there are for Trump. But it's still anybody's game. Yeah, and it's very weird to think because for the majority of this morning, at least of the undecided states, the president was leading in enough of them to put him over the top. And as of right now, that's not the case. But back to the president, doctor. Uh, he has intimated throughout the course of last night and this morning that he would want the counting to stop. He says it's really stopping illegal voting, which is different than counting legally cast ballots, and has threatened legal action. What kind of case does he have? None. Uh, legally, uh, for, for the entire history of American elections, uh, you, you turn in the vote, right, per state law. There is no national law on this. And then per state law, these votes are counted. This idea that we, we determine the winner on November 3rd, right, on election night, is a fiction brought about by TV news and the development of polling and projections that started really with the, you know, the 1960s with the Kennedy race. But legally speaking, there's nothing wrong with continuing to count these ballots. Politically speaking, what I was saying before becomes important because if Biden wins in more than one state, then Trump has to challenge in more than one state. Say, for instance, it comes down to North Carolina, right? Now Trump can focus his legal firepower down there. But if we're talking three, four states where he's got to disperse this firepower and make different cases with different state constitutions in play, I think it becomes much harder for him to, uh, to pull this out in the courts. Any states this morning that we are seeing results from surprising you in terms of where we thought things were going? Wisconsin. Um, if you look at the polling data there, it's it's uh, off by about. I mean, the, the early run, the early the, the polls coming into Tuesday were showing Biden up by about seven points, and so that's pretty significantly off. What's interesting is is that Georgia and North Carolina are not off. They're right where we thought they would be, um, and so. The question is, is Wisconsin a bellwether for what we're seeing in, in Michigan? And then, of course, what everybody's waiting to find out in Pennsylvania. And I, I think all of these states are going to be closer than uh, than we expected, but still within that margin of error. And remember, that margin of error can break either way. The pollsters can be correct. They just have to flip a coin to decide which two percent, uh, which side the two percent falls on. And that's what we're waiting to find out. Has there ever been a U.S. presidential election where more than one state had to do a recount? That is a good question that I don't know the answer to. Um, I would have to say probably yes, but not many if they're not coming to mind. Okay, that's <laughs> just, uh, and, and you know, just personally, because of the, the dynamics that are very unique to this election, given that there are mail-in ballots of which the demographics are different than the in-person voting, and thus seeing possibly some really wild shifts the day after, have you seen anything like what we're experiencing this morning? No, this is absolutely unique from several, you know, vantage points. The number of mail-in ballots, for instance, because of the pandemic, the effect that the pandemic has on same-day voting, right? Over and over again, we, we see these kinds of things. So this is entirely unique, and this is part of why our capacity to project these things based on the past is pretty weak right now because we've we've never lived in this past before. So we just we just don't have those tools in place today. Let's talk voter turnout really quick. Obviously, we don't have those exact numbers, but already we're seeing that these are really large numbers. Is this uh, more than what was predicted to be for voter turnout? No, I think this is about in line. Everybody was saying you know, it would be a large number. I think the interesting question is, is that even if the president loses the election, what you see here is not a resounding reproach of him or his policies. 
Biden is likely to win the popular vote by two, three million votes again, but that's not what people were hoping for on his side of the aisle. And so I think what you see in the end is that the vote's going to show us that we really live in two Americas right now. There is really a red America that has a different sense of itself and a different sense of where it wants its future to go, and a blue America that looks different and believes in a different kind of future also. Lastly, I want to ask about the United States Senate. Democrats had some hopes, high hopes even, that they could flip the Senate. Are those hopes dashed at this point? I think they probably are. We'll see. Georgia is going to be an interesting case. Um, but if I, if I were betting right now, I would say that uh, the Dems are going to come close but fall short. All right. Dr. Matt Schmidt, thank you so much for your time this morning. Very interesting stuff. My pleasure. Yes. Thank you again.